Hey guys, Trent at Black Horse Ranch here. And uh, since we did our catch up video, I uh, just thought I'd go ahead and do a farm tour. So uh, I got Jax here. He's going to take me around. It's uh, hard to drive a four wheeler when your right thumb is broken. So we're just going to take you around the place and show you what we got. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So this is our spring-fed pond. You can see where the snow's melted there. Uh, but it comes out from under the highway up there and goes into a barrel and then it feeds the pond. And uh, this sub-irrigates this whole little two-acre piece. Um, this is one of the luscious pastures we have. It grows nice and green. Um, but you can see it's really cold out here. and. Uh, most of the pond isn't frozen over, so it stays a decent temperature. This is the pond we use uh, to pump out of the summer when uh, the cows are away from the river. We pump out of this pond and truck water into the cows to fill up their troughs. So, yeah, that's that. Let's move on. show you the creek while we're here. So this is Keithley Creek, borders one side of our property up to the river. And uh, it mostly freezes over in the winter. It's right next to the barn over here. So we'll go take a look at the barn. So here's our barn. Uh, this is the guest barn. Uh, I think it was built in the uh, 20s in that area. In that era. Um, we had a guy here locally that uh, grew up here and his family homesteaded this area. And uh, he said this was here when he was five. So. We'll try to keep getting information on it from some of the locals, but that's about all we can figure just now. So this is our project I mentioned on another, our first video. But right now we're just in a sad state of demolition. And uh, we're kind of waiting for spring and, um, and uh, some more money to get going on this one. But we've got everything basically torn out. And uh, we'll go we'll go into more depth on this project um, at a later time. But anyway, this is our guest barn. And it's right across from the house over there. We got the uh, chicken coop. So that's for our laying hens. And uh, we built that ourselves. It's our own design. And uh, we call it the chicken Cadillac because we got some cheap wood and stuff, and uh, that's why it looks so nice. We probably wouldn't make another one like that because it cost it would cost a, a fair bit. But um, anyway, there's some of our hay, and there's our stock trailer that we got. Uh, kind of a project, but the uh, foundation and everything is sound. So, all right, let's keep going. All right, so kind of down here from the barn, we've got, we call it the gazebo, but I don't know what it was built for, maybe uh, equipment, but it's really tall. It's made out of huge I-beams. All they must have got from uh, an old bridge or something. But you can see our baler and our swather down there. Those are a couple of auction pieces that we got uh, this year. And uh, there you can see the creek line there. That's the border of our property. And it goes down to the the trail with the bridge over the river and so uh, yeah, there's that this is a little three acre piece here maybe this one's two acres and the other one's three acres uh, it's hard to remember but neither of these two little fields are fenced in so we don't run the cows on them we just hay them uh, 
hopefully eventually we can get them fenced in because we'd like to graze everything and uh, do our intensive grazing. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Got a couple of projects here which I'll go into more depth on in the video, but our tractor came with a loader um, and it was hooked into the remotes. Um, and uh, we've taken it off because it doesn't work very good on the remotes and uh, you can't run anything else without the bucket falling if you disconnect it. So um, it's a really old John Deere loader, it's got a single bucket cylinder. So this is going to be a project we're going to convert it hopefully into a dual cylinder um, and uh, put it a skid steer quick connect on it so that we can switch attachments easy. And we've also got this um, red fuel tank that we got at an auction it's for uh, gasoline. We've got our diesel tank there. Um, and really only we use gasoline mostly for the four wheelers uh, to get around, but we don't live close to a gas pump. so nice to have a tank uh, close by. Saves us some money from driving into town to get gas all the time. Um, and here's the shop. So there's our tractor we got. There's our wood pile. And uh, so this is behind the house. And uh, we got Jack's doing the limbo there. And uh, you can see the chicken coop on the other side there. All right, let's move on. So I wanted to take you back here. Um, here's our woodshed. Uh, but I wanted to take you back here and show you uh, our feed container. So these bays here on the side of the shop right now, they just have wood we're waiting for um, when we do our guest barn. It's like knotty pine and um, some rough cut fur and stuff like that. Um, it's some of the same wood we made our chicken coop out of that we got at an auction for a good deal. So it's kind of sitting here waiting for that. But we want to enclose some of these bays in uh, for doing dairy. And uh, I'll go through some of the stuff on another video about what we want to do. Um, but like other other animals we want to raise and, and uh, the dairy and that kind of thing. But we want to enclose some of these areas to make a milking parlor and uh, that kind of thing, a stall for calving and whatnot. So. Um, but then back here we've got our container, and we actually got this uh, when we were moving from Deary. And it was basically my garage in Deary since we didn't have anything there. We were renting a house, and I have a whole bunch of tools and stuff. So now we use it because it's uh, varmint proof, keeps the mice out, and we've got all of our chicken feed and stuff in here. So it's dark in here right now. I don't have a... See, we have up along the top there, I have these LED strips and they actually work pretty good to light this place up. Um, but I don't have the uh, cord run out here right now. So hopefully we can see this all right. So that's a big tote of uh, peas. And then we've got our, uh, our selenium salt. Um, it's Redmond salt and Redmond's conditioner, we've got our, I think that is kelp, and we've got our calcium for the, that's oyster shell for the chickens, and then we've got some straw back in here, um, and then these are, uh, these are actually organic oats, um, so they're from a farm here locally in McCall, Idaho, and um, they they are they're on their third year third and final year before their certification when we bought these so they should be certified now um, but we got our black oil sunflower seeds diatomaceous earth and then back there a bunch more uh, of the cracked peas here we've got uh, hard red wheat and a couple of bags of barley and and some cracked corn that we don't really use all that much probably can't see that very well um but anyway, this is our, our feed shed. So we actually mix our own chicken feed. And so 
we've done a bunch of research on um, what needs to be in the feed and all that kind of stuff and uh, that can be a whole other video that we do um, but we've come up with a um, I don't know a mixture a recipe basically that has been working pretty good um, the chickens come out of molt really fast um, so it's kind of hard, you know, most feeds nowadays have a lot of soy in them or uh, they have corn in for the carbohydrates. Um, and so to come up with a, a feed um, with ingredients um, that replaces the carbohydrates and, and has a high enough protein level, um, it's kind of hard. So, um, yeah, so we did a bunch of research and so far it's been working pretty good. We've been sticking to it and we also soak our grain before we mix it with the rest of the feed too. So. That actually boosts the protein by like seven percent after soaking for three days so um yep so anyway that's our that's our feed container that's weatherproof and um varmint proof and uh then we can move on and take you down and show you some more of the, the place uh before we go I just wanted to show you. So this is the rest of our hay that we got uh, this summer, and we have it. It's out here where the cows are, but we have this fence up, and so far it's kept them out. I guess we've made sure they're not hungry, but I'm sure if they got real hungry, they would come out here and get right in the hay. Uh, so this is. So these were our two cuttings. So um, this hay that I'm walking by right now is the best hay and then this this stack here is a combination of um, some of the first hay we got and uh, this the second cutting so this has a mixture of good and bad oh it's feeder hay so it just has a lot of other stuff besides alfalfa and grass in it weeds is what people would call it but or you could call it a salad bar a lot of a lot of stuff that's you know we were surprised when we came out this year and first had the cows out here because they would um, they would eat a lot of the stuff we thought were weeds that we needed to get rid of. Uh, one weed in particular was um, called, uh, Hillary's going to have to jog my memory, but prickly lettuce I think it's called. Um, but it's like a weed and I mean anybody that's had a house in the city like we have, it's one of those ones that grows up and you're like, oh, it's one of these tall stocky weeds with prickles on the sides that you got to wear gloves to pull and but when we we rotate pastures and uh the, the first thing the cows would do is they would find all those prickly lettuce and they would strip the leaves off of them and leave the stock that was there that was like their dessert before dinner but they would just come in and strip those down first thing they would hunt through all the grass and alfalfa and go right for that prickly lettuce um so a lot of the stuff we think is weeds is actually, the cows like it and it's good for them. So um, we don't spray or anything, uh, fertilizer or herb herbicide. Um, so that's, so we can have uh, healthy meat and uh, the cows can be healthier too. There's the cows we fed them out there today. So, all right, now we can move on to see some other stuff. So this is our other spring fed pond. Now you can see there's the cows up there, up by the shop. And we got this little bluff here. We're waiting for some good snow for some good sledding. But uh, So this pond leaks. Um, we want to get some pigs in here and see if we can get it sealed up. but. You can see it comes out here and it actually has a valve underground uh, that we can turn it on but we'd like to develop this into a bigger pond hopefully and uh, so that's the far corner of this field over there so this upper part with the house and the shop and everything is um, about 30 30 some odd acres uh, maybe close to 35 and then uh, you see the that uh, grade there that's the old railroad which is the Weezer River Trail that goes through our property 
And so uh, we'll be going over that and uh, checking out the bigger field uh, along the river. So here's the trail, uh, the rails, the trails, Weezer River Trail. There's a, in reference, there's a, the cows and the shop. And here's our lower field. And so it goes down there. I don't know if you can see the bridge very well, but it goes over the Keithley Creek, which is the border of our property there. And then this is the lower, the lower 40, we call it. So it goes all the way down to that point down there. And then that row of trees is basically the river. And then the, the creek and the river meet back in that corner. But all right, let's go check stuff out. So we're in the corner of uh, one of the corners of the property here, um, and I just wanted to point out these boxes here. We had we had uh, two sets of these, so there's two here and two in another spot, and we actually had a company um, pay us to put leaf cutter bees down here, um, and they basically increased their their flock. But um, this one did pretty good. It's got it's kind of right in the corner of the creek and uh, where the creek flows into the river just over here and uh, so they did pretty good over here they said anyway off we go on to the next spot so here we are before we leave the bee box area um, we wanted to show you guys we call it the confluence but it's where the creek meets the river it's one of the kids' favorite spot spots and uh, we're gonna take these loppers in there and trim off some branches because the trail kind of got thick during the spring and summer last year. So it's hard to duck around in there. So come on, let's go trim some branches. Good. Oh, one more. Okay. Oh wait, one more. All right. And maybe one more. Okay. Let's head to the conference.
So you guys have witnessed history for the first time on Black Horse Ranch. We saw an otter today. So he's just right over there on the bank and he uh, slithered right down into the creek when the dogs started threatening him, but he didn't care about us. We were up there on the bank, just, just back of here filming him and he heard me calling the dogs. So that was a cool thing to see. Made history, nice job. So he probably swam out there. Here's where the creek flows into the river, which is all frozen over at this point. So this kind of a calm area of the river uh, tends to freeze over all the way. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. We were, we were super excited to see it. Too bad the dogs saw him so soon and we could have watched him for a little bit longer. Jax is graciously driving me around. It was four degrees this morning. Uh, this is the river I showed you in the last video, and it's almost all frozen over, which means it's pretty cold. Well, our cow's water trough has had a couple inches of ice on it every morning, and it refreezes after a couple hours. So, yeah, nice, and you can see some ice blocks building up there. Cold day. Jax is hoping you guys really appreciate this video. Aren't you, Jax? <laughs> Alright, time to move on. So this is the far corner of our property. And uh, we've got some, some little woods. There's another couple of springs behind those trees over there. And uh, we hope to kind of develop those. And there's also a culvert that drains a little uh, drainage on the other side of the highway and we get a lot of water from that um, when stuff starts melting and uh, it actually makes a big pond down here in the field so um, we're hoping to get a little channel created we don't mind it coming out on the field so much but it it tends to erode so we want to get it channeled and maybe get a little rock bed get it through some vegetation all right <laughs> 